Mitsubishi's plug-in all-wheel drive hybrid system is quite unique and a little confusing. So let's take a deep dive into how it works because that's critical to understanding why the Outlander drives the way that it does. Things start out with a 2 liter gasoline engine. This engine makes a maximum of 117 horsepower and 137 pound-feet of torque. Details are a little scarce, but the rumor mill tells us that this will be upgraded to a 2.4 liter Atkinson cycle engine for 2019. The engine is directly connected to a 70 kilowatt generator that's equivalent to around 94 horsepower. In this video, we'll be talking mainly about horsepower rather than kilowatts because that's easier for most people to understand. Electricity from the generator flows into the 12 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack under the car. To move the car forward, Mitsubishi uses two independent electric motors. Both motors are rated at 80 horsepower, but the torque rating is actually a little bit different, with the rear motor making about 30% more torque than the front. The Outlander can power one or both motors from the battery alone, up to about 60 kilowatts total or 80 horsepower maximum. If more than 80 horsepower is called upon, the engine will start, the generator then generates power and sends it along to the front and rear traction motors. At this point, you're no doubt thinking, didn't Mitsubishi say the system was good for 197 horsepower total? How do you get 197 from 280 horsepower motors? This is where things get a little bit more complicated to explain. Inside the housing, where we find the generator and the front electric motor, is also a clutch. This clutch can engage and send power mechanically via a fixed ratio to the front wheels. This is what Mitsubishi refers to as their parallel hybrid mode. Now let's put everything together. The battery is the limiting factor in EV mode. You can operate essentially at any speed, but you're only going to get 80 horsepower out of the system. When operating as a hybrid, the vehicle starts out as a serial hybrid because that's the only way to get you up to 42 miles an hour. This mode applies in basically every load situation, whether it's part throttle or full throttle, as long as it's operating in hybrid mode. It's a true serial hybrid. The engine is turning, it's running a generator, the generator is sending power to those electric motors. Maximum power is 160 horsepower as long as there's charge available in the battery. If the battery drops down to some other state of charge, then the maximum power you could get is about 94 horsepower. Once you get up to highway speeds and the power demands are fairly low, the vehicle will switch into parallel hybrid mode. It will engage that clutch pack and send power directly to the front wheels. If you need power at the rear wheels or if you want to charge the battery or maintain its state of charge, then the vehicle will operate the generator and send power to wherever it's needed. At highway speeds, if you need more power or more torque, the system will move back to a serial hybrid mode. This gives you that 160 horsepower total, again drawing from the battery and drawing from that generator. And this mode will take you up to right around 70 miles an hour or so. Depending on a variety of factors, between 65 and 70 miles an hour, if you command a great deal of acceleration out of the vehicle, it will move back to a parallel hybrid mode. This is where you get that maximum 197 horsepower. However, it ramps up slowly. At around 65 miles an hour or so, the system can deliver about 160 horsepower total, and then as you move on up to about 90 miles an hour, that's when you hit the peak of 197 horsepower. That means that many people in America may never actually see 197 horsepower out of their Outlander hybrid, because in truth, there are very few areas in the United States where it's legal to actually get the full horsepower out of this hybrid system. Because of the fixed ratio between the engine and the front wheels, as you accelerate, there there would be a point in time where the vehicle would have to move back to a serial hybrid mode in order to prevent over revving the engine. However, the Outlander doesn't really go that fast, so it's not really a concern for this particular system. And there you have it, that's our complete look at Mitsubishi's plug-in hybrid system in the all-new Outlander plug-in hybrid. Be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash alexandautos. You can also head over to patreon.com and support this channel. I'll see you next week.